everybody, you know, they they are given this A and R title, junior A and R. Um, they work in the A and R department. Do you have signing power? Because people are shopping their demos. They are running up on anybody who has A and R next to their name. But what is the process on the inside? Where does the buck stop? Even with yourself, you're yeah. vice president. Do you have to go back and share it with the upper echelon of the company and say, look, you know, I believe in it, but y'all give me the final green light? Or does the buck stop with you? And then people who are not necessarily in, uh, vice presidents, where does the buck stop with them? You know. Are people wasting their time even speaking to somebody on a lower level? Should they fight to just get a meeting with you? What does that signing power look like in an organization like Atlantic? Um, so the way we work, a and we all report to the chairman, Craig Kalman, right? So on the A&R side, everybody – has the authority to go directly to Craig and say, listen, Craig, I feel strongly about this. Um, you know, here's, here's why I feel strongly about it. I think it would be a good fit for us. I think it works with our system. And, you know, Craig is pretty lenient about allowing you to execute, you know, execute your vision. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes we, you know, sometimes he may not understand what we saw in something or maybe he doesn't get it. And, and he'll give you he'll give you the opportunity to, to, to go and say, OK, I need to prove myself on this. I believe in it. You know, I'm going to lay on the sword for this one. And again, we can't win them all. But as an A&R, yes, I have power to sign. I can sign it. Um, and Craig can be just as excited as I am about it. Or he may be like, uh okay, that's cool. I, I don't get it, but you're passionate about it and I brought you here for a reason. So I'm going to go off the strength of you and your passion and, and we can go get that done. Um, so Craig is a, is a really good um, uh, chairman in that he, he allows us to, to see a vision and execute it. Um, you know, and, and I've seen cases of both. I've seen cases where it was a no brainer for Craig and Julie and, 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 and Kaiser, the whole marketing team. And then I've seen other things where certain people were scratching their head, like, um, I don't know, but if you <laughs> if you're telling me that's what it is, I'm going to go off the strength of you and we're going to give it a shot and don't prove me wrong. So, um, that, that's pretty much how that goes. Everybody, you know, there's different levels. Uh, like you said, I'm a VP. Prior to that, I was a director. Um, I came in as a consultant, and then I went directly to director, and then I went to VP. Other people came in as like a manager, a and &R manager, and then they became a director and, and worked their way up. So um, there's different levels to it, but any a and R's in our system has the authority to go to Craig, who's the chairman, and say, yo, I'm excited about this. This artist is doing this. He's building a fan base. He's selling out shows. He put out a project and it's, it's growing. And Craig's going to look at whatever you're, you're presenting and he'll give you his thoughts um, and, and kind of go from there. Can you give me some artists that you personally have passed on? And I ask you this, uh, a and you, you're human, right? Yeah. You you did it the right way. You just named all of the different levels that you had to climb mm -hmm. to get this VP title. But I know, you know, if you're a coordinator or you're a direct, even if you believe strongly in something, it's your name, it's your reputation. It is, damn, if I get this wrong, are they going to let me sign something else? <laughs> um, you know, yeah. all of these things are, you're human. You, 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 you finally made it into the game, right? but you might be slow to pull the trigger on some things, which I've noticed a lot of A&Rs are. What are some yeah. artists that 
may have come across your desk that you're like, damn, I just wish that I believed, not just in the artist, but even in myself at that point, that I would have took the risk, went into the office and said, look, I'm, 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 I'm a better on me. I want because I know that is that is something you have to grow to to get that kind of confidence because your job is on the line every time you sign something and it may not work. Right. So who have you passed on? Um. <laughs> that's, a, that's a that's a good one. Um. So let me. Okay. So Cardi B. Right. I didn't pass on Cardi. But I had an opportunity to get Cardi early. And I'm going to just keep it a buck and say that at the time, I may have overlooked it. Um, and so now I'm just like, see? <laughs> 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 but the good thing is we still got it in the building. So it yes, wasn't like... Did. Yes, you did. <laughs> And I still work. I still worked on the project. I got plaques with Cardi, so I. I but I just felt like, and and you know, Daryl, Brooklyn, Johnny, those are my guys for years, my homies. But like, and Shaft, or, but like at the time, I could have when it was still being developed, I could have gotten it early. But I also think maybe it wasn't ready yet. It was still in development. So to see where she's become and how she's rolled out perfectly. I'm also like, you know what? Maybe it was good the way it happened, the way it did, because it was sort of presented in a way like, yo, check out what I'm developing. It ain't ready yet, but watch me closely. And then by the time it came back around, it was already in the building. So that's one that I could say that, you know, um, when she was still on like Love and Hip Hop, and it was presented where I could have, could have put it together but I didn't right so that's one that I'm like but again it's still a win for the building it's still one for the team those are my guys and so I, I'm not tripping on it but that's one another example Chance the Rapper um, again I'm from Chicago and he started going crazy as an indie artist and I brought him in the building and Craig, my boss, was in an, in another meeting at the time with some pretty important, powerful people. And Chance had a short window. And it was like, okay, Craig is in this important meeting, but I got Chance the Rapper here. So I took it upon myself to – I just interrupted Craig's meeting. I went in there like, yo, um, you know, I just, I just bust in like, yo, Craig, I need to – I got somebody here I need you to meet. And I told him Chance the Rapper's here. And he was like, okay. And he he kind of came out real quick, just shook the hands and and then went back in his meeting. And needless to say, we didn't sign Chance. By the time we had put our offer in, every other label was trying to sign him. And at that point, he didn't even want to sign with a major. And he never did. So I don't look at that as I didn't pass on him. I, I feel like are there things I could have done I could have gone a little harder to get the deal done. Right. Like I said, there's certain levels to it where you're like jumping on a plane and following this kid on the road and all these different things that, that we could do to close a deal. And I didn't do that. But again, the fact that he never signed to a major makes me think, even if I had did all this crazy stuff, he probably still would have just did the indie route. So I don't necessarily look at that as a loss. It was just like, I had them in the building and I just didn't close, but nobody ended up closing. So I don't feel right. that bad about it. Um, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Those are two examples. Everything else is pretty much, you know, the way the game is now. Everybody pops up on research. Every label sees it. We all have the ability to sign it, but it becomes the thing of, you know, this deal is going to close for, two million dollars because every label's throwing up the money do you want to be the guy that pays 2.5 <laughs> you know and i'm like nah <laughs> i'm okay i'm okay i'm good you know what i mean so there's a lot of that but i don't look at those as losses because it's still got to make sense um still got to make business sense for the company and and i don't want to be in the game 
you know, doing two, three million dollar deals regularly. So some of those I just kind of let let those go wherever they may go. What's up, guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.